Pancreatic cancer is one of the most scary cancers that a person can be diagnosed with, and that's because it has one of the worst survival rates of any cancer, with its overall five-year survival rate being only 12 to 13%. So why is pancreatic cancer so deadly? Well, today we're gonna answer that question by taking a look at a real pancreas, discussing what the pancreas is supposed to do when it doesn't have cancer, then talk about where and how the cancer forms, what treatment options are available, and again, why those treatment options often fail. If you're new to the channel, I'm Jonathan Benyon with the Institute of Human Anatomy, and yes, we are about to get into some anatomical awesomeness, as well as some pathological rudeness of this cancer. So, let's do this. So let's start by taking a look at the pancreas. The pancreas is located in the abdominal cavity posterior to or behind the stomach. And so if we take a look at this cadaver dissection and I reflect part of the liver and then reflect the stomach out of the way, you can see this awesome organ, the pancreas. Now this part of the pancreas is called the head. Then we have the body all the way down to the tapering tail here. Now because we're kind of zoomed in here, let me show you where it would be on Jeffrey. The head would span from about L1, L2, and then the body and the tail would swoop over to the left side. Also, notice its relationship with this part of the small intestine that you can see me tracing with my finger here. It's wrapping around the head of the pancreas, and this part of the small intestine is called the duodenum. Now, sometimes people will pronounce it duodenum, and I actually used to purposely pronounce it as duodenum because I had a coworker who hated that pronunciation, so of course I had to pronounce it like that as much as possible. But whatever you like, duodenum or duodenum, you can have a debate about it in the comments. But coming back to the importance of the pancreas, the pancreas is a cool little multitasker because it functions as an endocrine gland as well as an exocrine gland. Endocrine means to secrete within, and endocrine glands secrete hormones into the bloodstream. And the pancreas is one of many endocrine glands. And there are certain cells within the pancreas called alpha and beta cells that secrete insulin and glucagon into the bloodstream. And this essentially helps to regulate blood glucose levels. And if you're interested in more details about how that exactly works, you can check out our diabetes video that I'll link at the end of this one. But it is actually the exocrine portion of the pancreas that is important to our pancreatic cancer story. Exocrine means to secrete without. And there are various exocrine glands throughout the body. Sweat glands are an example of exocrine glands, and they would obviously secrete sweat onto the outside surface of the body. And as I've already mentioned, the pancreas functions as one of these exocrine glands. But you might be thinking, wait a minute, my pancreas doesn't secrete anything to the outside of my body. But in a way, it actually does. The exocrine portion of the pancreas is made up of azonar cells that produce and secrete various enzymes that help with digestion. And these enzymes, mixed with pancreatic juices, get secreted into the duodenum through the pancreatic duct. Now here's the thing. Your digestive tract is a hollow tube. And like the outside surface of your body, the digestive tract is lined with epithelial tissue. And it is still not technically inside your body. Think about an endoscopy or a colonoscopy where they put the scope in through the mouth and go all the way down through the esophagus and into the stomach or through the anus and go all the way through the large intestine. Those scopes and cameras are obviously pulled right back out when the clinician is done going where no man has gone before. And so again, the inside surface of your digestive tract is still considered separate from the true internal environment of your body. And because the pancreas is secreting into this area that is still not fully inside the body, it is considered an exocrine gland. Now, I may have gone into a little bit too much detail explaining that, but again, the important point here is that the exocrine portion of the pancreas is what becomes a problem with pancreatic cancer. Now, even though today we're talking about something going wrong with the body, most of the time, the body gets things right, as the human body has systems and physiological processes that are beautifully organized. But your career, that one's a little less organized. So if your job feels like it's operating without a functioning frontal lobe, or worse, like your motivation's flatlining, it's time to bring in some outside help. And today's sponsor, Strawberry.me, is like giving your career a neurological upgrade. They'll match you with a certified career coach who acts like the executive control center for your goals, refining your focus, helping you make strategic decisions, and keeping your progress on track like a well-myelinated axon. And I've actually worked with one myself. But you might think, Jonathan, haven't you kind of already figured out your career? Well, beyond planning on going into the medical field, I didn't really anticipate owning my own anatomy lab, let alone making YouTube videos about it. 
and at times I felt a bit out of balance trying to juggle it all. So it was great meeting with a coach that asked me questions to help uncover what was really going on and put together a game plan to reestablish balance and set clear goals for what I want in the future. And this is built for real life. You take a short quiz, get matched in hours, and start working one-on-one -on -one with your coach. No unnecessary friction, no vague advice, just a clear path forward. So if your career feels more like chronic stress than homeostasis, visit strawberry.me slash the anatomy lab to claim $50 off your first session. Because while the human body is amazing, you weren't built to be stuck. And now, let's get back to pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic cancer most often arises from the exocrine cells of the pancreas, specifically the ductal cells that line the pancreatic ducts. And this most common type of pancreatic cancer, accounting for 85 to 90% of pancreatic cancers, is called ductal adenocarcinoma. Ductal referring to it originating in the cells of the ducts. Adeno means gland, as we have an exocrine gland here, and carcinoma referring to cancer. But like most cancers, once these cells mutate and become cancerous, they start to divide out of control. And if they continue to divide unchecked, they can metastasize, or in other words, spread to other organs and regions. And this takes us to our discussion of why pancreatic cancer is so deadly. At the beginning, I mentioned that the overall five-year survival rate for pancreatic cancer was around 13%. But if you catch it early, where the cancer is still localized, meaning it is still contained within the pancreas, five-year survival rate can be up to 44%. But if it has regional spread, meaning the cancer has spread from the pancreas to nearby structures or lymph nodes, five-year survival rate is 16%. But if the cancer has spread to distant parts of the body, such as the lungs, liver, or bones, five-year survival rate is 3%. So why are these survival rates so bad? Well, number one, pancreatic cancer is kind of a master of disguise. Early on, there are pretty much no symptoms. There might be some vague back pain or a little abdominal pain, but often people chalk those symptoms up to some other cause as it doesn't feel serious enough to go to the clinic or the hospital. And so by the time other more serious or noticeable signs and symptoms arise, like jaundice, which is yellowing of the skin, and in the case of pancreatic cancer, this yellowing of the skin usually starts because the tumor has now become large enough to block the bile ducts, so you get a backup of bile into the liver. And at this point, it is often too late. Tumors from pancreatic cancer can often get to be four or five centimeters before you feel anything. And again, by this time, the person is often in the later stages of the disease, and survival odds begin to tank. Number two, which ties right into number one, is that catching it early can be quite difficult. There is no universal screening or blood test for pancreatic cancer. Researchers are working on creating effective screening tests for early detection, but as of now, there's still nothing available that is clear cut. And so currently, for individuals that don't have a high risk for developing pancreatic cancer, there's no recommended screening like there is for something like colon cancer or breast cancer. But we'll talk about risk factors and things that you can watch out for in just a second. Now, the third reason why pancreatic cancer is so deadly is that it tends to be very aggressive and resistant to treatment. Pancreatic tumors, especially the most common type, ductal adenocarcinoma, grow quickly and invade surrounding organs and tissues. They also have a knack for resisting standard treatments like chemotherapy and radiation because they often build this dense protective stroma around themselves, which is kind of like a protective tissue capsule that shields a tumor from drugs and the immune system. And so now that we've talked about the gloom and doom of pancreatic cancer, is there anything you can do about it? Well, yes there are factors that put you at a higher risk of developing pancreatic cancer. And some of these factors you do have control over. First, we have smoking, which increases the risk of pancreatic cancer by up to two times. Several studies also suggest that having a high body mass, lack of physical activity, and metabolic dysfunction such as type 2 diabetes increases the risk of pancreatic cancer. And so trying to improve in these areas with lifestyle modifications such as diet and exercise could provide a beneficial risk reduction for pancreatic cancer, as well as reduce your risk of many other conditions. Alcohol can also increase the risk of pancreatic cancer, but this is really only seen in heavy drinkers that develop chronic pancreatitis due to the excessive alcohol consumption. Now, something that you can't control is your family history and genetics, and having a close family member that has had pancreatic cancer does increase your risk. And there are some genes that have been identified that increase one's risk of developing pancreatic cancer. And so even though there is no universal screening test for pancreatic cancer that everyone should use, it is important for anyone that has had a close family member with pancreatic cancer 
to let their medical provider know because the medical provider may consider having the patient do certain genetic testing. And just having this extra information is good for the medical provider because the medical provider may have a higher level of suspicion and almost keep the patient on a shorter leash, so to speak, if the patient were to develop certain symptoms that they may not worry as much about with a patient that has a lower set of risk factors for pancreatic cancer. But let's come back to treatment. I did briefly mention that these pancreatic cancer tumors are often resistant to treatments like chemotherapy and radiation. And one of those reasons was because they would build a protective stroma around themselves. Now, this doesn't mean that they still wouldn't attempt to use things like chemo or radiation, but there's just certain characteristics about these tumors that make them resistant to these type of treatments. Plus, as I continue to be a little bit of a broken record here, the cancer has already often spread and invaded other vital structures. But if for some reason it is caught early enough, and this is only about 15 to 20% of the time, surgery can potentially be curative. The most famous surgical procedure for pancreatic cancer is the Whipple procedure, also known as a pancreaticoduodenectomy, which, as that name implies, involves removing part of the pancreas and the duodenum. But the gallbladder and even part of the stomach get removed. So a purist of medical terminology may wonder why they didn't call it something like a gastropancreaticocholeduodenectomy, just food for thought there. But during my general surgery rotation, I got to be a part of this surgery, and it is a very complex surgical procedure. This is a very busy area to operate on with many important and delicate anatomical structures, and so it requires a skilled surgeon. But like I said, it can potentially be curative for those cases where the pancreatic cancer was caught early enough and confined to the pancreas. And so hopefully you found the information provided in this video helpful. And for anyone watching that has been affected by pancreatic cancer, our hearts go out to you as this obviously can be a very serious cancer. And thank you all for watching and supporting the channel. It really means a lot to everyone here at IOHA. Leave some comments below and let us know what you thought of today's video. And of course, you can always subscribe for more anatomical awesomeness each and every week.